Once upon a time, in a peaceful village of Yorkshire, there lived a girl named Belle. She loved reading and spent much of her time reading books. Good morning, Belle. Good morning, Uncle Bob. Brother, you shocked me. That was unexpected. <laughs> Bell, Sam, will you both come here for a minute? Coming, Father. I'm going out to the port to deliver goods. Should I bring something for you? No, Pa. I don't want anything. Just a rose would do. I want a leather jacket. And off he went towards the port. Her father reached the ship of newcomers who brought in dazzling clothes, jewels, and the finest leather a man could ask for. Wow, I love these rare pieces, but I can only take as much in my small cart. Thank you. Ah, oh, all the shopping is done for my daughter and son. I should move now. It's getting late. Oh. Rothshire Oh, that seems like an old castle I wonder if anybody stays here I need a place to stay for the night Huh? Hello? Is anyone there? Oh, please. Sit down. Eat. Um... is arranged in the north wing of the castle. You may have rest there. Thank you. You are so kind. It will make me happy if you can come down and I can thank you properly. No! It's all right. You are a guest for our castle. Stay for the night. But just remember, we hate thieves. So don't take anything that doesn't belong to you. Sure. Oh, it's morning. I think I must leave and reach home before kids start to worry. What? Wow, what a magnificent garden with so many flowers of all colors. And that blue rose. I've never seen a blue rose before. Belle will love it. The owner asked me not to steal anything, but this is just a flower, I suppose. What have you done? <laughs> you stole from me. I will have you rot in my tower for betraying my generosity. <sighs> I'm sorry. I only meant to take back a rose for my daughter. Uh, no, please let me go. My children are waiting for me. I am sorry. Oh, you should have thought about uh, them before you stole uh, from me. Now you will be no. my prisoner. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh. A week had gone by, and Belle still could not find her father. Belle, I hope we find father soon. 
Surely he is fine. Don't worry, we'll find him. Let's go to the port. Look, Belle! This arrow is pointing to the wrong way! Yes, it is. Let's find out what goes there. Maybe we could find Pa. Bro! That's our worst Palomino! Pa should be here! Pa! Belle! Sam! I am here! Pa, are you alright? Who did this to you? Let me get you out of this cage! Belle, fetch me that axe! How dare you! Monster! Why have you caged my father like an animal? Your father tried to steal from me, and you tried to help him escape. No one is leaving the castle now. Can I please ask you something? <sighs> what has my father done to deserve this punishment? He betrayed my generosity. I gave him shelter in a storm, and he tried to steal my most precious thing. I didn't know the importance of it. I <sighs> felt it was just a flower, and I am sorry. I am very sorry for what happened. It's my mistake. I asked him to bring a rose. I plead you. Please release him. You may keep me prisoner instead. Could she be the one I am waiting for? Is she the one to release me from my curse? A handsome guy sitting on a throne. An ugly lady is standing in front of him and requests something. No way! Get away from me, you ugly witch! Ugly witch? You refuse to see my inner beauty. Now I curse you to become uglier than your imagination. You will live like this. Please, I am sorry. I did not know who you are. Does not matter. People will never know who you really are too. Until there is someone who loves you despite of your looks. I would rather die than living like this. Fine. You must realize how life is without beauty. And if you wish to die, just eat this rose. In fact, you can give someone else your remaining life if you just think about that person. Actually, I can agree to something like that. If you are ready to take their place, they can leave. <laughs> pa, it's alright. You must go. I will be fine here. It's better if I stay here rather than you two. Belle, how would you be alright? I love you more than my life and have taken care of you after your mother left us. Now it's my chance to repay for your love. You must go and take care of you and Sam. I take full responsibility for this. I will not lock her. She will be a free person to move around in my castle. Thank you. I'll be fine, Pa. You may go. I am sorry, Belle. Please take care of yourself. The beast kept the promise, and kept Belle like a family. Belle! She read all the books from the castle's library, Belle. but they hardly spoke. Adam, it's alright. I have consciously chosen this path. You have lived lonely all your life. Now at least we can speak with each other. Um, I feel like I have taken your freedom and family. But still, you never see towards me as a monster. I believe in fate. Things happen sometime for a reason. Come, it's snowing. Let's go out for a walk.
I know you are missing your family. I don't know if I will see them ever. I do miss them. <laughs> Belle, what happened? Why are you sad? Belle, father is seriously sick. He is on bed since we left you. He won't eat or drink. I'm confused and don't know what to do. I thought I'd write to you. Love, Sam. Belle, I grant you a week. You go and revive your dad, but don't forget to return before the week's end. Dad, I am here now, and you will be fine in no time. Pa, I have to go now. The week is about to end and Beast must be waiting for me. Belle, you may go, but I surely can't live without you. We're back! I'm so happy to see you! I missed you like anything the whole week! <laughs> Bill, dear, what happened? The doctor told me that father is going to die in a few days. <laughs> oh, I think I can help. Just wait here. This is not an ordinary flower. It will give life to one, but take away from another. Just eat the petals and think of the person you want to save. It will save his life and take yours. Now go. You will be fine, Pa. Nothing will happen to you. You have become fine, but I was supposed to die. How did it go wrong? The rose was broken before I ate. No! I know you did it. You ate the part of the flower and saved my life. You gave your own life for mine. I love you. The curse has been broken. I am back to my real self. I know you truly love me, and I love you too, Belle. lived a young girl named Cinderella. Cinderella was kind and smart and beautiful. When Cinderella was very young, she had a happy life. Then one day, her mother died. Soon after, her father decided to marry again. The woman he married had two daughters of her own, Lottie and Daddy. <coughs> Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters were not kind. Cinderella's stepmother gave her daughters beautiful gowns of the finest silk and dazzling jewels and toys. To Cinderella, she gave nothing. Then, sadly, Cinderella's <laughs> father died too. Cinderella was left all alone in the large house with her two mean stepsisters and awful stepmother. Cinderella's life was hard. Her stepmother made Cinderella a servant in her own home. Every morning, Cinderella had to rise before dawn to do the cooking, the cleaning, the laundry, the baking, and the gardening, as well as take orders from Lottie and Dottie all day long. By the end of the day, Cinderella was so exhausted, she would occasionally fall fast asleep, curled up by the fire amid the cinder and ashes. 
This is why she was called Cinderella. Though her clothes were tattered and her face and hair were covered in ashes and soot, Cinderella was still beautiful and had a kind and cheerful heart. Lottie and Dottie teased Cinderella all the time. Your clothes look like dirty diapers, Lottie would shriek. Your face looks like a bucket of mud, Dottie would say. Then they would laugh and eat chocolates and ham sandwiches while watching Cinderella work. Cinderella's stepsisters were as ugly on the inside as they were on the outside. One day, a page from the castle arrived at the house with an invitation. The prince is hosting a grand ball in three days' time. He is hoping to find a bride. Every eligible young woman shall come and meet the prince. Lottie and Dottie were very excited. I'm going to marry the prince, Lottie exclaimed. Why should you marry the prince? You look like a rotten potato, Dottie shouted. Lottie and Dottie were just about to get into a very large fight when they heard Cinderella ask, Can I go to the ball? For a moment, the two sisters stared at each other. Then they laughed so hard they rolled around on the floor. You! Go to the ball, Dottie chortled. That's the silliest thing I've ever heard, Lottie giggled. Can you imagine our Cinderella married to the prince? Dottie exclaimed, which made the girls laugh <laughs> even harder. Girls, what is going on here? Cinderella's stepmother yelled as she entered the room. The girls stopped laughing long enough to tell their mother what had happened. Don't be silly. Of course Cinderella may go to the ball said the stepmother. The girls were very confused. This they did not expect. Lottie and Dottie began to protest when their mother continued. She may go to the ball if all of her chores are completed and she has sewn herself a new dress. All that day and the next and the next, Cinderella's stepmother gave Cinderella a long list of chores to do. Every day, from morning until night, Cinderella scrubbed and mopped and polished. There was no time to make a new dress. The night of the ball, Lottie and Dottie dressed up in their finest gowns and followed their mother out the door to the waiting carriage. Cinderella silently watched them go. She did not have a new dress, so she could not go to the ball. Sadly, Cinderella wandered out to the garden. There she sat down on the bench and cried. Suddenly, poof, a little old lady with wings and a wand was floating right in front of Cinderella. Cinderella, said the lady, I am your fairy godmother. Since it is your wish, you will go to the ball. But how? asked Cinderella. I have no dress and no way to get there. Run, quick, and fetch me four mice a pumpkin, and a lizard from the garden. Cinderella did so as fast as she could. First the fairy godmother touched the pumpkin. Poof! The pumpkin was transformed into a dazzling coach. Next, she touched the four mice. Poof! The four mice became four beautiful, proud, white horses. Then the fairy godmother touched the lizard. Poof! The lizard turned into a stately coachman in uniform. Cinderella was very surprised, to say the least. Now, said the fairy godmother, since you are so kind and smart, I will make you as beautiful on the outside as you are on the inside. The fairy godmother touched her wand to Cinderella's torn dress, and poof, Cinderella's rags became a beautiful ball gown. On Cinderella's feet were two delicate glass slippers. Enjoy yourself at the ball, said the fairy godmother, but be warned, my magic will end at midnight, and everything will be as it was before. Oh, thank you, thank you, cried Cinderella as she climbed into her coach and sped off to the castle. When Cinderella arrived at the ball, everyone stared at her. She was the most beautiful woman there. She looked so different that even her stepsisters and stepmother did not know who she was. The prince thought she was beautiful too. When he talked to her, 
He also discovered that she was kind, smart, and funny, too. The prince danced with Cinderella all night long, and Cinderella had never had so much fun. Suddenly, Cinderella noticed that the clock was about to strike midnight. I've had a lovely evening, Cinderella told the prince, but I really must go now. With that, she gathered up her skirts and fled the castle, leaving the prince very distraught. Wait, he cried. I don't even know your name. He chased after her, but Cinderella had vanished into the night. Then the prince found a glass slipper on the stair. In Cinderella's haste to leave, the slipper had fallen off of her foot, and she didn't have time to go back for it. The prince had a great idea. I will search every house in my kingdom. I will find the woman who fits this slipper, and I will marry her, if she would like to marry me. The next day he began his search. He went to every house in his entire kingdom, but still he could not find the woman who fit the glass slipper. Finally, he arrived at Cinderella's house. Lottie was the first to try on the slipper, but her foot was much too fat. Next, Dottie tried on the slipper, but her foot was much too long. Desperate, the prince asked, Are there any other young women in the house? Only our maidservant, Cinderella's stepmother snorted, but she didn't go to the ball. I would like her to try it, said the prince. And they had to obey him, because he was the prince. Cinderella came out of the kitchen and tried on the slipper. It fit her foot perfectly. The prince smiled at Cinderella and nervously asked her, Will you be my bride? I most certainly will, Cinderella replied. You are as handsome on the inside as you are on the outside. Soon after, Cinderella and the prince were married, and Cinderella moved to the castle. Lottie, Dottie, and her stepmother moved to the castle as well, and ate a lot of chocolates and a lot of ham sandwiches, and everyone lived happily ever after. Once there was a rabbit who always used to boast, it only takes a moment to run from pillar to the post. I can run, I can jump, I'm the fastest and the best I am the champion of champions, I say with thumping chest There was an old tortoise who quietly sat close Then from the green grasses he humbly arose He said, oh wise hare, come let's have a race It starts from here and ends to that place Track was set, a gun was fired, they both made a run. The rabbit went ahead and he poked some fun. I can run, I can jump, I'm the fastest and the best. I'm the champion of champions, I say with thumping chest. I'm so quick, I'm so swift, I'm the meanest and the bad. I can maybe eat some carrots, maybe cozy down my head. He slept really tight, dreaming that he won the race, while the tortoise kept crawling at a slow and steady pace. The crowd made a shout when the race was won. The tortoise was so happy, but the hare was stunned. So cool if you are fast, even okay to be proud But never wise to boast in front of the crowd Cause more than often there will surely be a case When the slow but steady wins the Once upon a time, 
There lived a rich old man. He had made his fortunes by turning barren lands into fertile farms and vineyards through toil and labor. As he lay on his deathbed, he called his sons to his side. He knew that his sons were greedy and lazy. They would waste away the money he had worked so hard to earn. He told them, I am going to be leaving you soon, but before I go, I have a secret to share with you. The boys, curious to know the secret, gathered around their father's bedside. I have stashed away a secret treasure. It is lying a foot under the ground, somewhere within our fields. Don't worry, father. We will find it, said the boys. As soon as they had buried their father after his death, they started to dig the ground. They dug industriously all over the estate, but to their utter dismay, they found nothing. He has made a fool of us, the foolish sons cried. However, the soil, which had been dug up and loosened, turned out to be a boon for the next harvest. The succeeding crops were of unparalleled richness which brought the sons immense wealth. The boys soon realized how clever their father had been. The secret of the hidden treasure was actually a ruse for the boys to dig up the soil which would help to produce a rich harvest. They had learned their lesson the hard way and ensured that they would preserve the legacy their father left them. Martin! Martin! Yes, Mum? Martin, you must cut your nails. They've become long and dirty. They're fine, Mum. I'll cut them later. Wait! It's important to keep your nails clean or you will get sick. Sure, Ma. But later. Hmm. This boy never listens. Come on, let's run away while he sleeps. He never looks after us. Yes, let's go. What? Please, please, please don't go. Don't leave me. <laughs> Martin, you never listen to your mum and keep us clean 
Why should we listen to you? I'm sorry. Oh, what a dream I had. Martin, it's morning. Time to get up. Sorry, Mum. I love you. My baby, you are a good boy. I am proud of you. You look smart with your clean hands. Yes, Ma. I learnt my lesson and will always take care of my body. Children, we should always keep our nails clean because if we do not, then all the dirt and germs will get inside them. And when we eat food, they will enter our body and make us ill. So don't forget to wash your hands often and cut your nails. Once upon a time, there was a hare who, boasting he could run faster than anyone else, was forever teasing tortoise for his slowness. Then one day, the irate tortoise answered back, who do you think you are? There's no denying you're swift, but even you can be beaten. <laughs> the hare squealed with laughter. Beaten in a race? By whom? Not you, surely. I bet there's nobody in the world that can win against me. I'm so speedy. Now, why don't you try? Annoyed by such bragging, the tortoise accepted the challenge. A course was planned, and the next day at dawn, they stood at the starting line. The hare yawned sleepily as the meek tortoise trudged slowly off. When the hare saw how painfully slow his rival was, he decided, half asleep on his feet, to have a quick nap. Take your time, he said. I'll have forty winks and catch up with you in a minute. The hare woke with a start from a fitful sleep and gazed around, looking for the tortoise. But the creature was only a short distance away, having barely covered a third of the course. Breathing a sigh of relief, the hare decided he might as well have breakfast, too. And off he went to munch some cabbages he had noticed in a nearby field. But the heavy meal and hot sun made his eyelids droop. With a careless glance at the tortoise, now halfway along the course, he decided to have another snooze before flashing past the winning post. And smiling at the thought of the look on the tortoise's face when it saw the hare speed by, he fell asleep and was soon snoring happily. The sun started to sink below the horizon, and the tortoise, who had been plodding towards the winning post since morning, was scarcely a yard from the finish. At that very point, the hare woke with a jolt. He could see the tortoise a speck in the distance, and away he dashed. He leapt and bounded at a great rate, his tongue lolling and gasping for breath. Just a little more, and he'd be first at the finish. But the hare's last loop was just too late, for the tortoise had beaten him to the winning post. Poor hare. Tired and in disgrace, he slumped down beside the tortoise, who was silently smiling at him. Slow and steady does it every time, he said.
It was a grandma in her bed. The wolf pretended to be grandma in the bed. It had big eyes, big ears, big ears and big head. Big eyes, big ears, big ears and big head. Big eyes, big ears, big ears and big head. Big eyes, big ears, big ears and big head.
upon a time there was a cute little spider named Incy Wincy. Do you want to hear its song? Here we go. The Incy Wincy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. So the Incy Bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. Incy was happy he waved happily to his monkey friend who was sitting under a coconut tree. Teeny weeny monkey saw a coconut up there and wanted to have it. A teeny weeny monkey climbed up a coconut tree. Down came a coconut and bopped him on his knee. Out came his daddy and kissed away the pain and the teeny climbed up the tree again. Near the coconut tree there was a flower garden full of roses. There lived a tiny shiny ladybug. The tiny shiny ladybug crawled inside a rose. A gardener splashed her on her pretty nose. The ladybug was frightened and thought that it was rain. And the gardener said, sorry, I won't do that again. Tiny shiny enjoyed the splash and wanted to have more fun. He called his friend and the sweetie butterfly. The sweetie weedy butterfly flew round and around. A strong wind came along and blew it to the ground. Out came its daddy and gave it a kiss and a hug. And the sweetie weedy butterfly was as happy as a bug. If you like our song, don't forget to subscribe our channel for more awesome songs. Goodbye, see you later. Too heavy.
You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. You know Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Down in 